Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 MH17 was a scheduled passenger flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur that was shot down on the 17th of July 2014 while flying over eastern Ukraine, killing all 283 passengers and 15 crew on board. Contact with the aircraft, a Boeing 777-200ER, was lost when it was about 50 kilometers 31 miles from the Ukraine-Russia border and wreckage of the aircraft fell near above in Donetsk Oblast, Ukraine, 40 kilometers 25 miles from the border. The shoot-down occurred in the war in Donbass, during the Battle of Shakhtarsk, in an area controlled by pro-Russian rebels. The crash was Malaysia Airlines' second aircraft loss during 2014 after the disappearance of Flight 370 on 8 March. The responsibility for investigation was delegated to the Dutch Safety Board (DSB) and the Dutch-led Joint Investigation Team (JIT), who concluded that the airliner was downed by a book surface-to-air missile launched from pro-Russian separatist controlled territory in Ukraine. According to the JIT, the booklet was used originated from the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade of the Russian Federation, and had been transported from Russia on the day of the crash, fired from a field in a rebel-controlled area, and the launcher returned to Russia after it was used to shoot down MH17. On the basis of the JIT's conclusions, the governments of the Netherlands and Australia hold Russia responsible for the deployment of the book installation and are taking steps to hold Russia formally accountable. The DSB and JIT findings confirmed earlier claims by American and German intelligence sources as to the missile type and launch area. In 2014, the American intelligence had also said that Russia had supplied the book missile to pro-Russian insurgents, and that the insurgents most plausibly shot down MH-17 in error, after misidentifying it as a military aircraft. Ukrainian Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk played the blame on professional soldiers who came from Russia, stating that it wasn't drunken militants with Ukrainian passports who shot down the Malaysian plane, it was done by Russian professionals and coordinated from Russia." Adding that, "...the whole world has learned about the Russian lies and Russian propaganda." As of May 2018, the Russian government rejects claims that Russia bears any responsibility for the crash, and denies involvement. The Russian Defense Ministry said that it had never deployed anti-aircraft missile systems in Ukraine. Several false conspiracy theories about the crash have since appeared in Russian media, including that the aircraft was followed by a Ukrainian military jet. The Russian government holds Ukraine responsible since the crash happened in the Ukrainian flight information region. The Ukrainian Air Force (UAF) was used extensively in operations against the rebels, and several UAF aircraft had been shot down over the rebel-controlled territory, both before and after the MH17 incident. Immediately after the crash, a post appeared on the V-Contact social media profile attributed to Igor Gherkin, leader of the Donbass separatist militia, claiming responsibility for shooting down a Ukrainian and 26 military transporter near Torre. This post was removed later the same day, and the separatists then denied shooting down any aircraft. In late July 2014, communications intercepts were made public in which, it is claimed, separatists are heard discussing an aircraft that they had downed. 
A video from the crash site, recorded by the rebels and obtained by News Corp Australia, shows the first rebel soldiers to arrive at the crash site. At first, they assumed that the downed aircraft was a Ukrainian military jet, and were dismayed when they started to realize that it was a civilian airliner. Topic. Aircraft Flight 17, which was also marketed as KLM Flight 4103, KL 4103 through a codeshare agreement, was operated with a Boeing 777-2H6ER, serial number 28411, registration 9MMRD. The 84th Boeing 777 produced, it first flew on 17 July 1997, exactly 17 years before the incident, and was delivered new to Malaysia Airlines on 29 July 1997. Powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent 892 engines and carrying 280 seats, 33 business and 247 economy, the aircraft had recorded more than 76,300 hours in 11,430 cycles before the crash. The aircraft was in an airworthy condition at departure. The Boeing 777, which entered commercial service on the 7th of June 1995, has one of the best safety records among commercial aircraft. In June 2014, there were about 1212 aircraft in service with 340 more on order. Topic. Passengers and crew The incident is the deadliest airliner shootdown incident to date. All 283 passengers and 15 crew died. By 19 July, the airline had determined the nationalities of all 298 passengers and crew, the crew were all Malaysian, while over two-thirds of the passengers were Dutch. Most of the other passengers were Malaysians and Australians, the remainder were citizens of seven other countries, among the passengers were delegates en route to the 20th International AIDS Conference in Melbourne, including J.O.E.P. Lang, a former president of the International AIDS Society, which organised the conference. Many initial reports had erroneously indicated that around 100 delegates to the conference were aboard, but this was later revised to six. Also on board were Dutch Senator Willem Witteveen, Australian author Liam Davison, and Malaysian actress Shuba J. At least 20 family groups were on the aircraft and 80 passengers were under the age of 18. The flight had two captains, Wan Amran Wan Hussan from Kuala Kangsa and Eugene Chu Jin Leong, Chinese, Zhu Renlong Pinyin, Zhu Renlong from Seremban, and two co pilots. Ahmad Hakimi Hanapi and MUHD Ferdows Abdul Rahim. Topic Background. Some airlines started to avoid eastern Ukrainian airspace in early March 2014 due to safety concerns. In April, the International Civil Aviation Organization warned governments that there was a risk to commercial passenger flights over southeastern Ukraine. The American Federal Aviation Administration issued restrictions on flights over Crimea, to the south of MH-17's route, and advised airlines flying over some other parts of Ukraine to exercise extreme caution. This warning did not include the MH-17 crash region. 
37 airlines continued over flying eastern Ukraine and about 900 flights crossed the Donetsk region in the 7 days before the Boeing 777 was shot down on the 14th of June 2014 a Ukrainian Air Force Aleutian Il-76 aircraft was shot down on approach to Luhansk International Airport all 49 people on board died on 29 June, Russian news agencies reported that insurgents had obtained a book missile system after having taken control of a Ukrainian air defense base possibly the former location of the 156th Anti-Aircraft Missile Regiment 156 ZRP. On the same day, the Donetsk People's Republic claimed possession of such a system in a since deleted tweet. On 14 July 2014, a Ukrainian Air Force and 26 transport plane flying at 6,500 metres feet was shot down. The militia reportedly claimed via social media that a book missile launcher had been used to bring down the aircraft. American officials later said evidence suggested the aircraft had been shot down from Russian territory. On 16 July, a Sukhoi Su-25 close air support aircraft was also shot down. The Ukrainian government said the Russian military had shot down the aircraft with an air to air missile fired by a MiG 29 jet in Russia. A spokesman for the Russian Defense Ministry rejected that report as absurd. According to the Dutch newspaper De Telegraaf, the Ukrainian government also warned the government of the Netherlands and other European countries about dangers in flying over the East Ukraine three days prior to the shootdown due to the downing of the N26 transport aircraft on the 14th of July. On the 15th of July 2014, following his visit to Kiev, Polish Minister of Foreign Affairs Radoslaw Sikorsky warned about the dangers posed by the continued Russian military support for pro-Russian separatists, especially ground-to-air missiles. On 17 July, an Associated Press journalist saw a book launcher in Snizhna, a town in Donetsk Oblast, 16 km 10 miles southeast of the crash site. The reporter also saw seven separatist tanks near the town. Associated Press journalists reported that the book M1 was operated by a man with unfamiliar fatigues and a distinctive Russian accent", escorted by two civilian vehicles. The battle around Savur Mohyla has been suggested as the possible context within which the missile that brought down MH17 was fired, as separatists deployed increasingly sophisticated anti-aircraft weaponry in this battle, and had brought down several Ukrainian jets in July. A Ukrainian N-26 was scheduled to deliver paratroopers to the battle arena on 17 July and, according to Russian expert Vadim Lukashevich, the separatists, "...might have been waiting just for them." According to the final report of the Dutch Safety Board, no N26 was downed in eastern Ukraine that day. On the 5th of June 2014, the airspace above Donetsk Oblast was closed by Ukraine below 26,000 feet (7,900 meters), and on the 14th of July, that below 32,000 feet (9,800 meters) was closed. A few hours before the shootdown the Russian ATC issued NOTAMUUUUV 6158 14 which closed the Russian airspace in the adjacent area below 53,000 feet meters FL 530. The reason given was, "...armed conflict in Ukraine." 
but such a high altitude was not justified by previous incidents and was comparable with the 18,000 meters (59,055 feet) range of the Buk missile. The Dutch Safety Board asked Russian ATC for further explanation but did not receive any clarity on the meaning of the restriction to FL 530. As with other countries, Ukraine receives overflight fees for commercial aircraft that fly through their borders and this may have contributed to the continued availability of civilian flight paths through the conflict zone, and so flights were allowed that time over FL-320 in the area MH17 was at FL-330 at the incident. Topic. Crash On Thursday, 17 July 2014, Malaysia Airlines Flight 17 departed from Amsterdam Airport Schiphol Gate G3 at 12.13 Central Europe Summer Time Coordinated Universal Time and took off at 12.31 Local Time, 1031 Coordinated Universal Time. It was due to arrive at Kuala Lumpur International Airport at 6:10 MYT Friday the 18th of July 22:10 coordinated universal time the 17th of July according to the original flight plan MH17 was to fly over Ukraine at flight level 330 33000 feet or 10060 meters and then change to FL350 around the Ukrainian city of Dnipropetrovsk. When it reached the area as planned, at 15.53 local time 12.53 coordinated universal time, Dnipropetrovsk Air Control, Nipro Control asked MH17 if they could climb to FL-350 as planned, and also to avoid a potential separation conflict with another flight, Singapore Airlines Flight 351 SQ-351 also at FL-330. The crew asked to remain at FL-330 and the air control approved this request, moving the other flight to FL-350. At 1600 local time, 1300 coordinated universal time, the crew asked for a deviation of 20 nautical miles, 37 kilometers to the left north of course on airway L980 due to weather conditions. This request was also approved by Nipro Control ATC. The crew then asked if they could climb to FL-340, which was rejected as this flight level was not available, so MH-17 remained at FL-330. At 16.19 local time 13.19 coordinated universal time, Nipro Control noticed that the flight was 3.6 nautical miles 6.7 kilometers north of the centerline of approved airway and instructed MH17 to return to the track. At 16:19 local time, 13:19 coordinated universal time, Nipro Control contacted Russian ATC in Rostov-on-Don round control by telephone and requested clearance to transfer the flight to Russian airspace. After obtaining the permission, Nipro Control attempted to contact MH17 for handing them off to Round Control at 16:20 local time, 13:20 coordinated universal time, but the aircraft did not respond. When MH17 did not respond to several calls, Nipro Control contacted Round Control again to check if they could see the aircraft on their radar. Round control confirmed that the plane had disappeared. The Dutch Safety Board reported a last flight data recording at 16:20 local time, 13:20 coordinated universal time, 
located west of the urban type settlement Rosipna, Rosipna near Rabav heading east southeast ESE, 115 degrees at 494 knots 915 km per hour, 568 miles per hour, at exactly 16 hours 20 minutes and 3 seconds local time 13 hours 20 minutes and 3 seconds coordinated universal time Time, a book ground to air missile, which had been launched from an area east from the aircraft, detonated outside the aircraft just above the cockpit to the left. An explosive decompression occurred, resulting in both the cockpit and tail sections tearing away from the middle portion of the fuselage. All three sections disintegrated as they fell rapidly towards the ground. The majority of debris landed near Rabov, a village located north of Tore in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk Oblast. The debris spread over a 50 square kilometers (19 square miles) area to the southwest of Rabov. The fireball on impact is believed to have been captured on video. Photographs from the site of the crash show scattered pieces of broken fuselage and engine parts, bodies, and passports. Some of the wreckage fell close to houses. Dozens of bodies fell into crop fields, and some fell into houses. Three other commercial aircraft were in the same area when the Malaysian plane crashed Air India Flight 113 AI 113, a Boeing 787 en route from Delhi to Birmingham, EVA Air Flight 88 BR 88, a Boeing 777 en route from Paris to Taipei, and the closest aircraft Singapore. Airlines Flight 351 SQ351 was 33 kilometers 21 miles away, a Boeing 777 en route from Copenhagen to Singapore. Topic: <inaudible> Recovery of bodies. A Ukraine Foreign Ministry representative said that the bodies found at the crash site would be taken to Kharkiv for identification, 270 kilometers, 170 miles to the north. By the day after the crash, 181 of the 298 bodies had been found. Some were observed being placed in body bags and loaded onto trucks. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte complained about the lack of respect shown to the personal belongings of the dead, which were reportedly being looted. He initially announced his disgust about the handling of the bodies that were reportedly being dragged around and thrown but later stated they had been handled with more care than originally thought. On 20 July, Ukrainian emergency workers, observed by armed separatists, began loading the remains of the passengers of MH17 into refrigerated railway wagons for transport and identification. On 21 July, pro Russian rebels allowed Dutch investigators to examine the bodies. By this time, 272 bodies had been recovered, according to Ukrainian officials. Remains left Torre on a train on the evening of 21 July, en route to Kharkiv to be flown to the Netherlands for identification. On the same day, Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak announced that the Malaysian government had reached a tentative agreement to retrieve the remains of the Malaysians who died in the crash, following any necessary forensic work. It was reported on 21 July that with 282 bodies and 87 body fragments found, there were still 16 bodies missing. An agreement had been reached that the Netherlands would coordinate the identification effort. A train carrying the bodies arrived at the Malyshev factory, Kharkiv on the 22nd of July. 
Dutch authorities stated that they found 200 bodies on the train when it arrived at Kharkiv, leaving almost 100 unaccounted for. In late July, the UK Metropolitan Police sent specialist officers to Ukraine to assist with the recovery, identification, and repatriation of bodies. The first remains were flown to Eindhoven in the Netherlands on the 23rd of July, moved there with Dutch Air Force C-130 and Australian C-17 transport aircraft, which landed at Eindhoven Airport just before 1600 local time. The day after, another 74 bodies arrived. The examination and identification of the bodies was conducted at the Netherlands Army Medical Regiment Training Facility in Hilversum and was coordinated by a Dutch forensic team. On 1 August, it was announced that a search and recovery mission, including about 80 forensic police specialists from the Netherlands, Malaysia, and Australia, and led by Colonel Cornelis Kuais of the Royal Marais Chaussee, would use drones, sniffer dogs, divers and satellite mapping to search for missing body parts at the crash site. Australian officials had believed that as many as 80 bodies were still at the site, but after some days of searching the international team had "...found remains of only a few victims," and concluded that the recovery effort undertaken by local authorities immediately after the crash was more thorough than initially thought." On 6 August the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte announced that the recovery operation would be temporarily halted due to an upsurge in fighting around the crash site threatening the safety of crash investigators and recovery specialists, and that all international investigators and humanitarian forces conducting searches would leave the country leaving behind a small communications and liaison team. On the 22nd of August the bodies of 20 Malaysians of 43 killed in the incident arrived in Malaysia. The government announced a national mourning day, with a ceremony broadcast live on radio and television. On 9 October a spokesman for the Dutch National Prosecutor's Office stated that one victim had been found with an oxygen mask around his neck, a forensic investigation of the mask for fingerprints, saliva and DNA did not produce any results and it is therefore not known how or when that mask got around the neck of the victim. By 5 December 2014, the Dutch-led forensic team had had identified the bodies of 292 out of 298 victims of the crash. In February and April 2015 new remains were found on the site, after which only two victims, both Dutch citizens, had not been identified. Topic. Reporting in the mass media De Telegraaf, a large circulation Dutch tabloid, published on 19 July a front-page photo collage of pro-Russian rebel leaders, including Igor Gherkin, under the one-word headline, "'Murderers' Mordenars. It was suggested on other media that credit and debit cards may have been looted from the bodies of the victims, and the Dutch Banking Association said it would take «preventative measures» against any possible fraud. There were also accusations that other possessions had been removed and that evidence at the crash site had been destroyed. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte acknowledged on 6 August that early reports of chaos and criminality around the site may have been exaggerated. One eyewitness observed that valuable items like shoes and bottles of alcohol were untouched in the wreckage. Aftermath 
About 90 minutes after the incident, Ukraine closed all routes in eastern Ukrainian airspace, at all altitudes. The incident dramatically heightened fears about airliner shootdowns, leading to some airlines announcing they would avoid overflying conflict zones. Shortly after the crash, it was announced that Malaysia Airlines would retire flight number MH17 and change the Amsterdam Kuala Lumpur route to flight number MH19 beginning on 25 July 2014, with the outbound flight unchanged. In association with the retirement of the Boeing 777 aircraft type from Malaysia Airlines fleet, Malaysia Airlines terminated service to Amsterdam, opting to code share with KLM on the KULAMS route for service beyond 25 January 2016. On 18 July 2014, shares in Malaysia Airlines dropped by nearly 16%. On 23 July 2014, two Ukrainian military jets were hit by missiles at the altitude of 17,000 feet 5, meters close to the area of the MH17 crash. According to the Ukrainian Security Council, preliminary information indicated that the missiles came from Russia. In July 2015, Malaysia proposed that the United Nations Security Council set up an international tribunal to prosecute those deemed responsible for the downing of the plane. The Malaysian resolution gained a majority on the Security Council, but was vetoed by Russia. Russia had proposed its own rival draft resolution, which pushed for a greater UN role in an investigation into what caused the downing of the aircraft and demanded justice, but their proposal would not have set up a tribunal. On the 9th of June 2016, a Russian businessman claimed that the shooting down of the plane put an end to hopes of a Russian nation in Ukraine and prolonged the war in Donbass. Topic. Investigation Two parallel investigations were led by the Dutch, one into the technical cause of the crash, and a separate criminal inquiry. The technical report was released on 13 October 2015, while the criminal investigation reported some of their findings in September 2016. According to the Convention on International Civil Aviation, the country in which an aviation incident occurs is responsible for the investigation, but that country may delegate the investigation to another state. Ukraine has delegated the leadership of both investigations to the Netherlands. Topic: On-site investigation. In the hours following the crash, a meeting was convened of the Trilateral Contact Group. After they had held a video conference with representatives of insurgents affiliated with the Donetsk People's Republic, who controlled the area where the aircraft crashed, the rebels promised to provide safe access and security guarantees to the National Investigation Commission, by cooperating with Ukrainian authorities and OSCE Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe monitors. During the first two days of investigation, the militants prevented the OSCE and the workers of Ukrainian Emergencies Ministry from freely working at the crash site. Andrei Pergen, a leader of the Donetsk People's Republic, declared later that, We will guarantee the safety of international experts on the scene as soon as Kiev concludes a ceasefire agreement. 
By 18 July 2014, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder had been recovered by separatists, and three days later were handed over to Malaysian officials in Donetsk. The voice recorder was damaged, but there was no evidence that data had been tampered with. The National Bureau of Air Accidents Investigation of Ukraine, which led investigations, both off site and on site, during the first days after the crash, had by August 2014 delegated the investigation to the DSB because of the large number of Dutch passengers and the flight having originated in Amsterdam. On the 22nd of July 2014, a Malaysian team of 133 officials, search and recovery personnel, and forensics, technical and medical experts arrived in Ukraine. Also Australia sent a 45-member panel headed by former Air Chief Marshal Angus Houston, who had earlier supervised the MH370 probe. Approximately 200 Special Forces soldiers from Australia were also deployed to provide support for the JIT investigators. The United Kingdom sent six investigators from the Air Accidents Investigation Branch and the UK Foreign Office sent extra consular staff to Ukraine. It took until late July before the full international team could start working at the crash site, under the leadership of the Dutch Ministry of Defence. On 30 July 2014, a Ukrainian representative said that pro Russian rebels had mined approaches to the crash site and moved heavy artillery. On 6 August 2014, the experts left the crash site due to concerns about their safety. In mid-September they unsuccessfully attempted to regain access to the site. On 13 October 2014, a Dutch-Ukrainian team resumed recovery of victims' personal belongings. In mid-November 2014, work was undertaken to remove part of the wreckage from the crash site. Earlier efforts by the recovery team to salvage the MH17 wreckage had been frustrated by disagreements with the local rebels. The recovery operation took one week to complete. The debris was transported to the Netherlands where investigators reconstructed parts of the plane. In August 2015, possible book missile launcher parts were found at the crash site by the Dutch led Joint Investigation Team. JIT. Topic. Cause of crash Soon after the crash both American and Ukrainian officials said that a 9M38 series surface-to-air missile strike was the most likely cause, and if so, then the missile was fired from a mobile Soviet-designed book missile system NATO reporting name, SA-11 Gadfly. As this was the only surface-to-air missile system in the region capable of reaching the altitude of commercial air traffic. According to defense analyst Reed Foster, from Jane's Information Group, the contour of the aluminium and the blistering of the paint around many of the holes on the aircraft fragments indicate that small, high-velocity fragments entered the aircraft externally, a damage pattern indicative of an SA-11. Ballistics specialist Stefan Fruling of the Australian National University's Strategic and Defense Studies Center concurred with this, explaining that since it struck the cockpit rather than an engine it was probably a radar-guided, rather than heat-seeking, missile equipped with a proximity-fused warhead such as an SA-11. Shortly after the crash, Igor Gherkin, leader of the Donbass separatists, was reported to have posted on social media network V-Contact, taking credit for downing a Ukrainian and 26. 
This news was repeated by channels in Russia, with Life News reporting, "...a new victory of Donetsk self-defense who shot down yet another Ukrainian airplane." The separatists later denied involvement, saying they did not have the equipment or training to hit a target at that altitude. Russian media also reported that Alexander Borodai called one of the Moscow media managers 40 minutes after the crash, saying that, "...likely we shot down a civilian airliner." Witnesses in Torre reported sightings on the day of the incident of what appeared to be a book missile launcher, and app journalists reported sightings of a book system in separatist-controlled Snizhna. The witness reports backed up photographs and videos which had been posted online of the book launcher in rebel held territory. On 19 July 2014, Vitaly Nader, the chief of the counter intelligence department of the Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, told a news conference. We have compelling evidence that this terrorist act was committed with the help of the Russian Federation. We know clearly that the crew of this system were Russian citizens." He cited what he said were recorded conversations in which separatists expressed satisfaction to Russian intelligence agents that they brought down an aircraft. While one of the involved persons acknowledged that these conversations took place, the separatists denied that they were related to the crash of MH17 and blamed the Ukrainian government for shooting it down. According to Nader, a book launcher used in the shootdown was moved back into Russia the night after the attack. The SBU released another recording, which they said was of pro-Russian separatist leader Igor Bezler being told of an approaching aircraft two minutes before MH17 was shot down. Bezler said the recording was real, but referred to a different incident. The head of the SBU, Valentin Naliva Ichenko, later concluded that rebels intended to shoot down a Russian airliner in a false flag operation to give Russia a pretext to invade Ukraine, but shot down MH17 by mistake. Journalists from the Associated Press in Snizhna, Ukraine reported seeing a book M1 enter the town operated by a man with unfamiliar fatigues and a distinctive Russian accent", escorted by two civilian vehicles, which then moved off in the direction where the shootdown later occurred. According to Ukrainian counterterrorism chief, Vitaly Nader, after downing the plane under separatist direction, the launcher's Russian crew quickly moved it back across the border into Russia. On the 22nd of July 2014, a rebel fighter revealed to an Italian reporter that fellow separatists had told his unit the aircraft had been shot down under the assumption that it was Ukrainian. This information was verified and confirmed on the same day by a German newspaper. Unnamed American intelligence officials stated that sensors that traced the path of the missile, shrapnel patterns in the wreckage, voice print analysis of separatists' conversations in which they claimed credit for the strike, and photos and other data from social media sites all indicated that Russian backed separatists had fired the missile. American officials said that satellite data from infrared sensors detected the explosion of flight MH17. American intelligence agencies said that analysis of the launch plume and trajectory suggested the missile was fired from an area near Torre and Snizhna. The British Daily Telegraph said the Telegraph's own inquiries suggest the missile, an SA-11 from a book mobile rocket launcher, was possibly fired from a cornfield about 19 kilometers 12 miles to the south of the epicenter of the crash site. 
Other sources suggest the missile was launched from the separatist-controlled town of Chernokino. Several other media outlets including The Guardian, The Washington Post and The Sydney Morning Herald reported that the aeroplane is believed to have been downed by a rebel-fired missile. An unnamed American intelligence official stated that Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 may have been shot down in error by pro-Russian separatists, citing evidence that separatists launched an SA-11 surface to air missile that blew up the Malaysian airliner. They said it was possible the rebel was a former member of the armed forces of Ukraine who had defected to the pro-Russian separatists. The official dismissed Russian allegations that MH17 took evasive action and said the claim that the Ukrainian government had shot down MH17 was not realistic, as Kiev had no such missile systems in that area, which was rebel-controlled. American intelligence officials also said that Russia was attempting to disguise the flow of weaponry it was delivering to the rebels by sending older weapons that matched Ukraine's inventory. The British Foreign Office stated that it was highly likely that the missile was fired from an area controlled by Russian backed separatists. The Russian Ministry of Defense has maintained that American claims of separatist responsibility were unfounded and said that the American intelligence agencies have not released any of the data on which they based their conclusions. According to the Russian military, in what the New York magazine called Russia's conspiracy theory. MH17 was shot down by the Ukrainians, using either a surface to air missile or a fighter plane. On 21 July 2014, the Russian Ministry of Defense held a press conference and said that while the Boeing 777 was crashing, a Ukrainian Su 25 ground attack aircraft approached to within 3 to 5 kilometers miles of the Malaysian airliner. The mod also claimed that satellite photographs showed that the Ukrainian army moved a Buxam battery to the area close to the territory controlled by the rebels on the morning of 17 July, hours before the crash. They said the installation was then moved away again by 18 July. Promoted by Russian media, the idea that a Su-25 could have downed the Boeing 777 with an air-to-air -air missile was dismissed by chief designer of the Su-25, Vladimir Babak. In 2015 Bellingcat purchased satellite photos from the same area and time as used by the mod and demonstrated that they had used all the photos May and June 2014 in their presentation that were edited to make a Ukrainian book launcher appear as if it was removed after the attack. In the report published by the Dutch Safety Board, an air to air missile strike was ruled out. In an interview with Reuters on 23 July 2014, Alexander Khodakovsky, the commander of the pro Russian Vostok Battalion, acknowledged that the separatists had an anti aircraft missile of the type the Americans had said was used to shoot down the aircraft, and said that it could have been sent back to Russia to remove proof of its presence, he later retracted his comments, saying that he had been misquoted and stating that rebels never had a book. In November 2014 he repeated that the separatists had a book launcher at the time, but stated that the vehicle, under control of fighters from Luhansk, had still been on its way to Donetsk when MH17 crashed. 
It was then withdrawn to avoid being blamed. On 28 July 2014, Ukrainian security official Andriy Lysenko announced, at a press conference, that black box recorder analysis had revealed that the aircraft had been brought down by shrapnel that caused massive explosive decompression. Dutch officials were reported to be stunned by what they saw as a premature announcement and said that they had not provided this information on the 8th of September 2014 the BBC released new material by John Sweeney who cited three civilian witnesses from Donbass who saw the book launcher in the rebel controlled territory on the day when MH17 crashed Two witnesses said the crew of the launcher and a military vehicle escorting it did not have local accents and spoke with Muscovite accents. On the same day Ignat Ostanin, a Russian journalist, published an analysis of photos and films of book units moving in Russia and Ukraine in the days before and after the MH17 crash. According to Ostanin, the markings on the specific launcher suspected of being used to shoot MH17, together with the number plates of the large goods vehicle that carried the launcher, suggested that it belonged to the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade of the Air Defense Forces of the Russian Ground Forces. On 8 October 2014, the president of the German Federal Intelligence Service, BND gave a presentation about MH17 to a German parliamentary committee overseeing intelligence activities. According to Der Spiegel, the report contained a detailed analysis which concluded that pro-Russian separatists had used a captured Ukrainian book system to shoot down flight MH17. The report also noted that Russian claims the missile had been fired by Ukrainian soldiers and that a Ukrainian fighter jet had been flying close to the passenger jet were false. The Attorney General of Germany opened an investigation against unknown persons due to a suspected war crime. Between November 2014 and May 2016, UK based investigative collective Bellingcat made a series of conclusions, based on their examination of photos in social media and other open source information. Bellingcat said that the launcher used to shoot down the aircraft was a Book 332 of the Russian 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade based in Kursk, Russia, which had been transported from Donetsk to Snizhna and was controlled by separatists in Ukraine on the day of the attack. On the 22nd of December 2014 the Dutch news service RTL News published a statement of an unnamed local resident who witnessed the shooting down of MH17, indicating that the plane was shot down by a missile from rebel territory. He took photographs of what appeared to be the vapor trail of a ground-launched missile which he passed to the SBU. On 24 December Russia's state-operated domestic news agency RIA Novosti quoted the leader of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic, Alexander Zakharchenko, saying he saw MH17 shot out of the sky by two Ukrainian jets. In January 2015 a report produced by the German investigative team Correct, V concluded a book surface to air missile launcher operated by the 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade shot down MH17. 
Large amounts of other circumstantial evidence were presented separately by various parties that supports this version, identifying specific launcher vehicle, operator name, truck transporting it and its alleged route through Russia and Ukraine. In March 2015, Reuters published statements from named witnesses from Chervony Jovtin, Ukrainian, Servonezovtin, a village close to Tore and Snizhna, who said they saw saw the book rocket passing over the village when it was fired from a field around 1.5 km away. It also published a statement from a witness who was said to be a separatist fighter referred to by first name only who confirmed that the launcher was placed in that area on the day of the Boeing crash to prevent Ukrainian airstrikes. In July 2015, News Corp Australia published the transcript of a 17 minute video recorded at the scene shortly after the crash. The transcript and published segments of the video indicated that Russian-backed rebels arrived at the crash site in the expectation of finding the wreckage of a military aircraft and of locating crew that had parachuted from the aircraft. In May 2016, Stratfa released satellite imagery taken five hours before the crash, which showed a Russian book system traveling on a flatbed truck east through the town of Makiyuka. 40 km away from Snizhna. Stratfors concluded that a book system had moved from the Russian border toward Donetsk on 15 July 2014, and then moved back to the east on the afternoon of 17 July 2014, hours before Flight MH17 was shot down. Dutch Safety Board reports Topic Preliminary Report On the 9th of September 2014 the preliminary report was released by the Dutch Safety Board DSB this preliminary report concluded that there was no evidence of any technical or operational failure in the aircraft or from the crew prior to the ending of the CVR and FDR recordings at 13, 2003 hours UTC. The report also said that Damage observed on the forward fuselage and cockpit section of the aircraft appears to indicate that there were impacts from a large number of high-energy objects from outside the aircraft. According to the investigators, this damage probably led to a loss of structural integrity that caused an in-flight breakup first of the forward parts of the aircraft and then of the remainder with an expansive geographic spread of the aircraft's pieces. Jib Joustra, chairman of the Dutch Safety Board, explained that the investigation thus far pointed towards an external cause of the MH17 crash, but determining the exact cause required further investigation. They also said that they aimed to publish the final report within a year of the crash date. Topic. Final report The Dutch Safety Board DSB issued its final report on the crash on 13 October 2015. The report concluded that the crash was caused by a Book 9 M38 series surface-to-air missile with a 9 N314M warhead. The warhead detonated outside and above the left-hand side of the cockpit. The impact killed the three people in the cockpit and caused structural damage to the airplane leading to an in-flight breakup resulting in a wreckage area of 50 square kilometers and loss of the lives of all 298 occupants. Based on evidence they were able to exclude meteor strikes, the plane having technical defects, a bomb, and an air-to-air -air attack as causes of the crash. 
The DSB calculated the trajectory of the missile and found it was fired within a 320 square kilometer, 120 square miles area southeast of Torre. Narrowing down a specific launch site was outside the DSB's mandate. The findings do not specify who launched the book missile but according to Al Jazeera, the area identified by the DSB was controlled by separatists at the time of the downing. In addition to the technical investigation, the selection of the flight route was also investigated by the DSB. Many airlines had avoided the eastern Ukrainian airspace for months prior to the MH17 disaster. Many others, including 62 operators from 32 countries, continued to use this route. The DSB recommended that states involved in armed conflicts should exercise more caution when evaluating their airspace, and operators should more thoroughly assess the risks when selecting routes over conflict areas. <laughs> <laughs> Criminal investigation The criminal investigation into the downing of MH17 is being led by the Public Prosecution Service of the Dutch Ministry of Justice, and is the largest in Dutch history, involving dozens of prosecutors and 200 investigators. Investigators interviewed witnesses and examined forensic samples, satellite data, intercepted communications, and information on the web. Participating in the investigation along with the Netherlands, are the four other members of the Joint Investigation Team JIT, Belgium, Ukraine, Australia, and lastly, Malaysia, which joined in November 2014. Early in the investigation, the JIT eliminated accident, internal terrorist attack or air-to-air -air attack from another aircraft as the cause of the crash. In December 2014, in a letter to the Security Council, the Netherlands UN representative wrote that the Dutch government is deliberately refraining from any speculation or accusations regarding legal responsibility for the downing of MH17. Also in December, the Assistant Secretary of the United States Department of State's European and Eurasian Affairs said America had given all of its information, including classified information to the Dutch investigators and to the ICAO. On the 30th of March 2015, the JIT released a Russian language video calling for witnesses in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions who might have seen a book missile system. The video included some previously undisclosed recordings allegedly of tapped phone conversations between rebel fighters about the book. In one recording, of a conversation a few hours after the shoot-down, a fighter says that a member of the book's accompanying crew had been left behind at a checkpoint. In another recording, dated the day after the shootdown, a rebel allegedly says the book system and its crew had been brought from Russia by the librarian. The video presents a scenario whereby a book missile was transported on a Volvo low loader truck from Siverny, Sevenage, a town located within a kilometre of the Russian border near Krasnodon, to Donetsk during the night of 16-17 July. In the week following the public appeal, the JIT received more than 300 responses resulting in dozens of serious witnesses. In 2016 the presence of the transloader of matching color with a book missile was confirmed on a satellite photo of the area taken just a few hours before the downing of the plane, which was described as, "...correlating with other evidence." 
by Stratfor who found the photo in Digital Globe archive on the 9th of April 2015 Dutch authorities made available 569 documents concerning the shoot down personal information and official interviews had been redacted a further 147 documents were not made public Topic. Findings of the Joint Investigation Team JIT. On 28 September 2016, the JIT gave a press conference in which it concluded that the aircraft was shot down with a 9M38 Buk missile fired from a rebel-controlled field near Pervomyski, Pervomyskija town 6 km miles south of Snizhna. It also found the book missile system used had been transported from Russia into Ukraine on the day of the crash, and then back into Russia after the crash, with one missile less than it arrived with. The JIT said they had identified 100 people, witnesses as well as suspects, who were involved in the movement of the book launcher, though they had not yet identified a clear chain of command to assess culpability, which was a matter for ongoing investigation. The Dutch chief prosecutor said, "...the evidence must stand before a court," which would render final judgment. During the investigation, the JIT recorded and assessed 5 billion Internet pages, interviewed 200 witnesses, collected half a million photos and videos, and analyzed 150,000 intercepted phone calls. According to JIT head prosecutor Fred Westerbeke, the criminal investigation is based on immense body of evidence including testimonies of live witnesses who saw the book launcher, primary radar data, original photos and videos. On 24 May 2018, after extensive comparative research, the JIT concluded that the book that shot down the flight came from the Russian 53rd Anti-Aircraft Missile Brigade in Kursk. The head of the National Investigation Service of the Dutch Police asked the eyewitnesses and insiders to share information about the identities of the book crew members, the instruction the crew members followed and persons responsible for the operational deployment of the involved book on 17 July 2014. According to Dutch Public Prosecution Service, by 24 May 2018, "...the authorities of the Russian Federation have not reported to the JIT that a book of the 53rd Brigade was deployed in eastern Ukraine and that this book downed flight MH17." In response, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that Russia will analyze the JIT conclusion, but will acknowledge it only if it becomes a party in the investigation. The Russian Ministry of Defense in turn stated that no Russian book crossed the border with Ukraine. On the 25th of May 2018, the governments of the Netherlands and Australia issued a joint statement in which they laid responsibility on Russia for its part in the crash. The Netherlands and Australian foreign ministers stated that they would hold Russia legally responsible for shooting the airliner down. Netherlands Foreign Minister Stef Bloch stated that, "...the government is now taking the next step by formally holding Russia accountable." and the Netherlands and Australia today asked Russia to enter into talks aimed at finding a solution that would do justice to the tremendous suffering and damage caused by the downing of MH17. A possible next step is to present the case to an international court or organization for their judgment." 
several other countries and international organizations expressed their support for the JIT's conclusions and the joint statement by the Netherlands and Australia. UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said the United Kingdom fully supports Australia and the Netherlands, calling on Russia to cooperate. High Representative Federica Mogherini of the EU stated that the European Union calls on the Russian Federation to accept its responsibility and to cooperate as well. The German government called on Russia to fully explain the tragedy. The U.S. Department of State issued a statement saying that the United States strongly support the decisions by the Netherlands and Australia, requesting Russia to acknowledge its involvement and to cease its callous disinformation campaign. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg called on Russia to accept responsibility and fully cooperate. In line with United Nations Security Council Resolution 2166, quote, in response to the JIT's conclusions, Russian President Vladimir Putin reiterated that the Russians are not involved in it. On 7 February 2019, Russia agreed to discuss the shootdown of MH17 with the Netherlands. On 24 April 2019, Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte discussed the criminal investigation with Ukrainian President elect Volodymyr Zelensky. Proposed International Tribunal In June 2015, the Netherlands, supported by the other JIT members, sought to create an international tribunal to prosecute those suspected of downing the Malaysian airliner, which would take up the case after the closing of the criminal investigation. The Dutch hoped that an international tribunal would induce Russian cooperation, which was considered critical. In late June 2015, the Russian government rejected a request by the five countries on the investigative committee to form a UN tribunal which would try those responsible for the shooting down of the aircraft, calling it, "...not timely and counterproductive." On 8 July 2015, Malaysia, a member of the UN Security Council, distributed a draft resolution to establish such a tribunal. This resolution was jointly proposed by the five JIT member countries. Russian UN Ambassador Vitaly Cherkin responded, I don't see any future for this resolution. Unfortunately, it seems that this is an attempt to organize a grandiose, political show, which only damages efforts to find the guilty parties." Russia later circulated a rival resolution which criticized the international investigation's lack of "...due transparency." and demanded those responsible be brought to justice, but which did not call for a tribunal. In a vote, Malaysia's resolution gained majority support of the UNSC, but was vetoed by Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Criminal prosecution in a statement made on 5 July 2017 by the Dutch Minister of Foreign Affairs Bert Kernders, it was announced that the JIT countries will prosecute any suspects identified in the downing of flight MH17 in the Netherlands and under Dutch law. A future treaty between the Netherlands and Ukraine would make it possible for the Netherlands to prosecute in the cases of all 298 victims, regardless of their nationality. This treaty was signed on 7 July 2017. 
On 21 March 2018, the Dutch government sent legislation to the parliament, allowing the suspects involved to be prosecuted in the Netherlands under Dutch law. As of May 2018, no charges have been filed. A joint investigation between Bellingcat, The Insider, and McClatchy DC Bureau identified another person of interest to the investigation. The person known as Andre Ivanovich, or by the call sign Orion, according to Bellingcat, is a Russian GRU officer named Oleg Vladimirovich Ivanikov. Ivanikov has a distinct, high-pitched voice. The Kremlin denied this allegation. <laughs> <laughs> British ISC report On 20 December 2017, the Intelligence and Security Committee of the UK Parliament published its annual report. It contains a short section entitled, ''Russian Objectives and Activity Against UK and Allied Interests'', which quotes MI6 as stating, ''Russia conducts information warfare on a massive scale''. An early example of this was a hugely intensive, multi-channel propaganda effort to persuade the world that Russia bore no responsibility for the shooting down of Malaysian Airlines Flight MH17, an outright falsehood, we know beyond any reasonable doubt that the Russian military supplied and subsequently recovered the missile launcher. Topic: Civil cases. In July 2015, a writ was filed in an American court by families of 18 victims accusing the separatist leader Igor Gherkin of orchestrating the shootdown and the Russian government of being complicit in the act. The writ was brought under the Torture Victim Protection Act of 1991. In May 2016 families of 33 victims of the crash filed a claim against Russia and President Vladimir Putin in the European Court of Human Rights, arguing Russian actions violated the passengers' right to life. A group of 270 relatives of Dutch victims joined the claim in May 2018 after the JIT concluded that Russia was involved. In July 2016, Malaysia Airlines was sued in Malaysia by 15 passengers' families in two separate writs, each brought under the Montreal Convention, arguing that the airline should not have chosen that route. A month earlier, a separate lawsuit was brought by the families of six crew members who alleged negligence and breach of contract by the airline. Topic. Reactions Topic. Countries Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko called the crash the result of an act of terrorism, and also called for an international investigation into the crash. Malaysian Deputy Foreign Minister Hamza Zanadin said that the Foreign Ministry would be working with the Russian and Ukrainian governments with regard to the incident. Prime Minister Najib Razak said that Malaysia was unable yet to verify the cause of the crash and demanded that the perpetrators be punished. The Malaysian government flew the national flag at half-mast from 18 July until 21 July. Dutch Prime Minister Mark Rutte and King Willem Alexander voiced their shock at the crash, and Minister of Foreign Affairs Franz Timmermans joined the Dutch investigation team sent to Ukraine. Dutch government buildings flew the flag at half-mast on 18 July. 
music was cancelled and festivities were toned down on the last day of the Nijmegen marches. On 21 July the Netherlands opened a war crimes investigation on the downing of the aircraft and a Netherlands public prosecutor went to Ukraine as part of this investigation. Rutter threatened tough action against Russia if it did not help in the investigation. On the same day, Timmermans spoke at the UN Security Council meeting, after the Council had unanimously condemned the shooting down of MH17. An increase in negative emotions and somatic complaints was observed in the Dutch population during the first four days after the MH17 crash. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott said in an address to Parliament that the aircraft was downed by a missile which seemed to have been launched by Russian backed rebels. Julie Bishop, the Australian Minister for Foreign Affairs, said in an interview on an Australian television programme that it was «extraordinary» that her Russian counterparts had refused to speak to her over the shootdown after the Russian ambassador was summoned to meet her. The Russian government was critical of Abbott's response. Abbott was one of the first world leaders to publicly connect the shootdown to Russia. Abbott later criticized the recovery efforts as shambolic and more like a garden cleanup than a forensic investigation. Bishop publicly warned separatist forces against treating the victims' bodies as hostages. Abbott also said in an interview on 13 October 2014, in anticipation of Russia's President Vladimir Putin's attendance at the 2014 G20 summit, scheduled for mid-November 2014 in Brisbane, Australia. Australians were murdered. They were murdered by Russian-backed rebels using Russian-supplied equipment. We are very unhappy about this. Russian President Putin said that Ukraine bore responsibility for the incident which happened in its territory, which he said would not have happened if hostilities had not resumed in the southeast of Ukraine. He also said that it was important to refrain from reaching hasty conclusions and politicized statements before the end of the investigation. He said that Russia would help an international inquiry led by the ICAO. At the end of July a Duma deputy Ilya Ponomarev said in an interview for Die Welt that the separatists had shot down the plane by mistake and that Putin now realized he had supplied the weapon to the wrong people. The Danish Institute for International Studies has pointed out to the similarities of Russian reaction to the downing of Korean Airlines flight KAL-007 in 1983 where the USSR initially denied any involvement. United States President Barack Obama said the United States would help determine the cause. In a press statement, White House spokesman Josh Ernest called for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine to allow for a full investigation. Vice President Joe Biden said the plane appeared to have been deliberately shot down, and offered American assistance for the investigation into the crash. American ambassador to the United Nations Samantha Power called on Russia to end the war. The British government requested an emergency meeting of the United Nations Security Council and called an emergency COBRA meeting after the incident. Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Martin E. Dempsey said that instead of backing away from supporting the rebels in the wake of the airliner shootdown, Putin had taken a decision to escalate. Topic: Organizations. 
On 17 July the European Union's representatives José Manuel Barroso and Hermann van Rompuy released a joint statement calling for an immediate and thorough investigation. The EU officials also said that Ukraine has first claim on the plane's black boxes. The International Civil Aviation Organization announced, on 18 July, that it was sending its team of experts to assist the National Bureau of Air Accidents Investigation of Ukraine, NBAAI, under Article 26 of the Convention on International Civil Aviation. The United Nations Security Council adopted Resolution 2166 on 21 July, regarding an official crime investigation into the incident. On 24 July 2014 the ICAO issued a state letter reminding signatory states of their responsibilities with respect to the safety and security of civil aircraft operating in airspace affected by conflict. After the crash, memorial services were held in Australia and in the Netherlands, which declared 23 July, the day when the first victims arrived in the country, a national day of mourning, the first since 1962. The opening ceremony of the AIDS 2014 conference, on 20 July, of which several delegates had been on board flight MH17, began with a tribute to the victims of the crash. In Malaysia, makeshift memorials were created in the capital city of Kuala Lumpur. Russian media coverage In July 2014, shortly after the crash, the liberal Russian opposition newspaper Novaya Gazeta published a headline in Dutch that read, Virgi Fons, Nederland. Forgive us, Netherlands. Coverage by official media and bodies has however differed from coverage in most other countries and significantly changed over time usually in response to new evidence published by DSB and the investigation team according to the poll conducted by the Levada Center between 18 and the 24th of July in 2014 80% of Russians surveyed believed that the crash of MH17 was caused by the Ukrainian military. Only 3% of respondents to the poll blamed the disaster on pro Russian separatists in eastern Ukraine. In December 2017, the Russian portal The Insider, the news agency McClatchy DC, and Bellingcat performed a joint investigation that confirmed the identity of a high rank military officer using a call sign, Dolphin to be Colonel General Nikolai Fedorovich Tashev. Tashev is frequently heard in the wiretaps acquired by JIT supervising the operation of book delivery and setup. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Initial reactions and and 26 downing version On the evening of the crash, the Life News portal released a statement from the separatists saying that a Ukrainian Air Force and 26 transport plane had been shot down by a missile and crashed. Atartas and Ria Novosti also reported that an N-26 had been shot down by the separatist militia near Torre at around 1600 local time in what it described as, "...yet another victory of DPR self-defense." There was no evidence about altitude and weapons used. Shortly after it became evident that the plane was a civilian one, the separatist media denied any involvement in the crash and possession of anti-aircraft missiles capable of reaching this altitude. Topic. 
Topic: Conspiracy theories. On 18 July commander of the Donbass People's Militia Igor Gherkin was quoted as stating that, "...a significant number of the bodies weren't fresh." He followed up by saying, "...Ukrainian authorities are capable of any baseness." and also claimed that blood serum and medications were found in the plane's wreckage in large quantities. Gherkin also claimed that some of the passengers had died a few days before the crash. The Russian government funded outlet RT initially said that the plane may have been shot down by Ukraine in a failed attempt to assassinate Vladimir Putin, in a plot which was organized by Ukraine's Western backers. This was quickly dismissed as Putin's flight route was going hundreds of kilometers north of Ukraine. Other conspiracy theories propagated by Russian media included that the Ukrainians shot down the plane by mistake, drawing parallels to downing Siberia Airlines Flight 1812 in 2001, reported in July and in December 2014, that Ukrainian air traffic control controllers purposefully redirected the flight to fly over the war zone proven false by the DSB investigation, and that the Ukrainian government organized the attack on the plane to bring infamy upon the pro-Russian rebels. The number of alternative theories disseminated in Russian mass media started growing as the DSB and JIT investigations increasingly pointed towards the separatists. On 15 November 2014, Russia's Channel 1 reported on a supposedly leaked spy satellite photo which showed the plane being shot from behind by a Ukrainian Su-25 fighter jet. Many other Russian media reprinted the photo but its authenticity was immediately dismissed as the airplanes were out of scale which indicated poor copy and paste. Later it was disclosed, that the photo had been initially emailed to the Vice President of the Russian Union of Engineers by a self-described aviation expert who had found it on a Russian online forum. The aviation expert later apologized, saying that he was unhappy with how the information had been used. In July 2014, Sara Firth, who had worked as a correspondent with RT for the previous five years, resigned in protest at the channel's coverage of the crash, which she described as lies. RT said Firth had left to take another job. In 2017, Dutch newspaper NRC Handelsblad described how false stories about the MH17 crash had been propagated with the support of Christian Democratic Appeal politician Peter Omtzigt, who introduced a Russian speaking Ukrainian man as an eyewitness to the crash on a public expert debate in May 2017. The man, who was an asylum seeker from Ukraine, did not witness the crash and his speech, texted to him by Omtsik prior to the interview, repeated the Russian-promoted version that Ukrainian jets downed the Boeing. Topic. The Ukrainian book version In May 2015, Novaya Gazeta published a report by a group of Russian military engineers that came to the conclusion that the airplane was shot down by a Buk M1 launcher with 9 M38M1 missile. The authors also analyzed the visible impact traces on the surface of the airplane and suggested that the missile couldn't have been fired from Snizhna, but was instead fired from Zaroshchensky and claimed that a Ukrainian anti-air unit was located there at that time. 
In June 2015 the report was the subject of a press conference and was attributed to Mikhail Malisevsky, chief engineer at Moscow headquartered Almaz Anti, the book missile manufacturer. The Security Service of Ukraine said that there were inaccuracies in this version, and called part of the report a fake. Russian military expert Vadim Lukashevich argued on TV Rain that the spatial orientation of the rocket at the moment of explosion did not exclude the possibility that it was launched from Snizhna, as the report claimed. Lukashevich also noted that the report admitted a book missile as the cause of the crash, discrediting the previous theories about the crash, Su-25 etc., circulated in Russian media. Ukrainska Pravda questioned claims about the Ukrainian anti-aircraft unit and stated that Zaroshchensky was under control of pro-Russian forces on the day of shootdown. Novaya Gazeta published a long analysis by Mark Solonin, also denying the Almaz anti version, interviewed inhabitants of Zaroshchensky who denied claims that Ukrainian forces and book launchers were present in the village at that time. According to Bellingcat, Russia's satellite images were from June and showed signs of editing. Bild described the Russian satellite images fake. On 17 September 2018, Russia's Ministry of Defense held a press conference that aimed to cast doubt on Moscow's culpability for the tragedy. Lieutenant General Nikolai Parshin, chief of the Missile and Artillery Directorate, told that after Dutch investigators displayed parts of the missile and their serial numbers, they studied and declassified archives at the research center that produced the book missiles. Parshin said the Russian archives show that the missile that was made of these parts was transported to a military unit in western Ukraine in 1986, and to Russia's knowledge never left Ukraine. Officials also claim that video evidence presented by Joint Investigation Team, JIT, in which the missile that allegedly shot down the plane being moved from Russia into Ukraine, were fabricated. JIT responded that it had requested Russia in May 2018 on the issue of details about recovered missile parts, but had received no answer. Information from the Russian Ministry of Defense will be carefully studied as soon as the documents were made available, as requested in May 2018 and required by UNSC in 2016. JIT stated it had always carefully analyzed information provided by Russia, but information presented to the public was inaccurate on several points. Russia has given differing accounts over time of how MH17 was shot down, for example they also claim to have evidence radar image of Ukrainian fighter fired an air-to-air -air missile to MH17. Alexander Turchinov, Secretary of National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, said that Russia's claim is yet another failed fake report that the Kremlin made up in order to to cover up their crime that has been proven by the official investigation as well as independent experts. Topic Maps Topic See also List of airliner shootdown incidents List of aircraft accidents and incidents resulting in at least 50 fatalities Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>